The Exasperation of Shota Aizawa. Written by Katie Did. Dubbed by Melberry Stars. Summary. Izuku tries to study. The ghosts inside his quirks are not helping. When the Vestiges had first started talking to Izuku outside his dreams, he'd believed this to be an unprecedented opportunity to explain and obtain the wisdom of his seniors and aid his development as a hero. Boy, had he never been disillusioned fast. As Aizawa stood with his back turned, writing on the blackboard, N said, That man has an ass I could bounce a ten yen coin off of. Nana giggled. I'll say that there is a high-quality hunk. In response to Izuku's glare, she shrugged. What? I'm married, not dead. Well, I guess I am dead. Izuku groaned and rubbed his forehead. Out the corner of his mouth, he hissed. I was trying to glare at you in silence. You're distracting me. Unfortunately, as soon as one of the vestiges stopped talking, one of the other six started. The second spoke over Aizawa. That's a completely inaccurate portrayal of history. The Prime Minister hated the metahumans with a passion. He even shipped his own daughter off to a boarding school in Europe after she developed a power. He hardly a voice of reason and moderation. Talk about winners writing the history books. Izuku was torn between curiosity and the real experiences of a contemporary historical figure and needed to pass his history exam. Since Aizawa had scolded him yesterday for not paying attention in class, necessarily worn out. He whispered, I'd love to hear more about that later, but right now I need to take notes. The third said, Now he's claiming that the evil-eyed cursed Dark Lord was the greatest vigilante era. What nonsense. That man had never attacked anything more dangerous than a stray raccoon, much less all for one. Leader and I didn't even get mentions. I demand that you set the record straight with your teacher. Sweetly, Izuku whispered, How am I supposed to do that when you won't tell me your name? With a pout, the third turned his back and resumed staring at the wall. Yorichi said, I told you my name, and I say that you should tell your teacher the first personal Japanese hero team formed again five years earlier than he said. He'll probably be pleased and impressed that you remembered the correct date. Izuku could use some brownie points after Aizawa had caught him shouting at a vegetable yesterday. Are you sure? Positive. Yorichi beamed. Izuku raised his hand. Excuse me, Mr. Aizawa. I believe the first professional hero team formed five years earlier than that. Shoto said, Yes, that's what I've been telling everyone. This instantly gave Izuku a bad feeling. Aizawa stared warily. Yes, there is a popular conspiracy theory that the Prime Minister was secretly using heroes for five years before it was reported to the public. But I expect you to take that off your tinfoil hat and use the correct date on the exam. Face flaming, Izuku sat down in a seat. Shoto winked and mouthed, Don't be afraid to speak the truth to power. Yorichi said, I'm sorry for the record I was telling the truth. I'm sure you were. Izuku sighed. He'd become more cynical than ever. The vestiges had revealed to him how much of his history textbooks were inaccurate. Without looking at him, Aizawa called. Stop talking in class, Midoriya. Izuku flushed even harder. He stared down at his notes, which had more doodles than text. For the next five minutes, Izuku tried his hardest to concentrate. The ghost had even left him alone, but his mind kept sipping away. He couldn't even blame the vestiges at this time. They were behaving. Except for All Might's wispy and silent half-ghost, who'd started to fight invisible villains, his punches mimicking whatever All Might was doing in the real world. Judging from the way he kept leaping in the air, the real All Might must be fighting a flying villain. Was it a wings or floating quirk? Damn it. Izuku really had lost track of what Aizawa was saying. N drifted over. Do you have trouble concentrating in class? I used to as well. For me, chewing gum and squeezing balls helped. It was on the tip of Izuku's tongue to say the vestiges were half his problem, but that actually sounded like a good advice. Not daring to speak that again, he wrote on the paper. Thank you. I'll try that. A paper floated out of his back. Bonjo said, I took the liberty of correcting your math homework. You had two problems wrong. All of the other one-for-all users stared at him. 
and said, Bonjo was a math champion in high school. Everyone stared even harder. Hachike said, I wrote your literary assignment for you. When I was living in the forest, I read a lot of books. Up until that point, Izuku hadn't realized that he'd forgotten about the Japanese literature I said I'd do today. He teared up. I don't know what to say. Thank you all. Aizawa cleared his throat. Is my lecture making you cry, Midoriya? Izuku stuttered. No, uh, I... I'm sorry, Mr. Aizawa. He covered his face with his hands. Yorichi said, None of this is your fault. Izuku nodded gratefully. Yorichi continued, I'm going to fix this. Izuku noticed the grin on Yorichi's face and realized first probably didn't mean he was going to make his fellow vestiges shut up. Wait, but he'd spoken too late. With a flash of green light, Yorichi's ghostly form merged with Izuku's body. His legs no longer under his control, Izuku shot up his feet. Eyes blazed with green lightning. An impossibly deep voice bellowed. Azawa, it's not Ninth's fault that he's distracted. He has seven ghosts talking in his ear. Also, most of your history textbooks are full of incorrect government propaganda. And I would know because I was there. Stop punishing him for the correct answers. I'm friends with all the local cats. And if you don't give Ninth a good grade, then I'll tell them never to let you pet them ever again. He stopped and used Izuku's lips to frown. Was that too harsh? I might have been too harsh. Good news is... Sixth and seventh would like to tell you that you have a perfect ass. Izuku sagged back down in his seat, the life gone out of him. As Yorichi's ghostly form reappeared, he shot Izuku a thumbs up. The chalk slipped from Aizambo's face as he stared down to the space where a ghost had been. Two pink dots form on his cheeks. The entire class dissolved into chaotic shouting. Izuku buried his face in his hands. Now that he understood why All Might had been celebrating so hard after Izuku had absorbed enough one for all that the ghost had started to follow him instead. His loyalty to his mentor weird, with a desperate need for peace and quiet, and somebody inside him finally broke. You know what? Yesterday All Might told me how much he misses having you all follow him around and keep him. Why don't you go bug, I mean, help him?